Hello and welcome to the Leander98 channel. Today, we are going to be taking a look at smoothening 3D models. In this case, we have cars. Now, there is has been a traditional way of smoothening them. At least, a little more recently, has been this. This is XTC3D, and this is currently what's been being used. Now, let's take a look at some examples of this. This right here is a Dodge Coronet. I wish I had... Uh, you know what? I have an idea. I said I had an idea. This right here is a Dodge Coronet Super B. I used the XTC 3D Smooth on on this and then painted it in this nice purple. Now, from a distance, it looks amazing. Absolutely stunning. However, if we were to absolutely nitpick, we can zoom in and we still see some 3D layer lines on the hood. Now, this isn't the absolute worst thing that could potentially happen when it comes to smoothing cars. There's a lot worse things. And that's also another thing I want to point out is a problem with the XTC 3D. Because basically, XTC 3D is a two-part resin. So basically, what you have to do is you put part A and then you mix it with part B. In this case, it's two of whatever amount of this, and then you have to use one part of this. Now that sounds all fine and dandy. However, with what it gives you is a little measuring cup, and then if you've actually used this stuff, you realize that the usage of that measuring cup is almost ruined after the first time. And the whole point is that obviously this is a resin that dries over time. It is a chemical bond resin. Now what if I told you, well I guess before I even get into the introduction of something else, so this is an example of what it looks when it's properly done. Now what if I showed you what it looks like when it's poorly done? Sadly, I can attest to this. This right here is an unsanded, unpainted, just primered model that I used XC3 3D on. So that means I also did not sand the plastic prior. So we can see a couple <clears throat> parts here of the plastic popping up. That's not a big problem. However, our problems start to arise when we look at the globs that this stuff does. Look, I've almost lost all my grill detail just because of it. So, and also, look, no hood lines, and I barely have door lines. This stuff gets really thick. And also, because you basically have to dispose of everything after you use it, same goes with the brush. And the brush, if you want to go cheaply, without having to ruin bristle brushes, you have to use a foam brush. And if you've ever used a foam brush, foam brush absorbs this stuff. Pretty badly, actually, to the point where it even... If you have at least a huge lot of stuff, it starts to dry midway. <clears throat> so, basically, with it holding in all that XTC 3D, without changing brushes, you eventually get to the point where it just starts blobbing everywhere, and then you have an excess amount on the car. And that goes with why my grill is filled in. Now, what if I, now we can get into the tie-in here. What if I told you that there is a way around this? Because also with XTC 3D, within how disposable of the prod of the materials that you use, you're going to need something else. I mean, yeah, you're going to have to have a lot of stuff set up, so then you can actually use it and not throw away a brush every 5 milliseconds. So, what do we use to get around this? <clears throat> ah, so, let's take a look put this away and these are going to be our two cars that we are going to use for this we have a TVR speed 12 concept car <clears throat> and we also have a 99 Honda Civic okay so we at least have two cars here that we can test this on and we'll also have these painted by the end of the video too however what we're going to use is actually uh, not meant to be a smooth on, but it works. 
standard polymer resin, also known as the Elegoo resin that you use on a resin 3D printer. Okay, so what's the whole point of this as opposed to this? Well, this is not a chemical reaction base stuff. It's actually UV resin. So basically, all we need is to lather some of this on. We don't even need much, honestly, and also a bright sunny day. Because obviously trying to fit one of these cars underneath one of those nail curing things ain't going to be easy. So what we're going to do is we are going to coat these two cars with this. And we are going to, well, here's another benefit. <clears throat> This stuff takes a couple hours to dry, and maybe even a couple days to actually cure if you mix it correct. And if you don't mix it correct, you could probably still leave fingerprints. Well, this one, because the paint kind of hardened, but... Yeah, you can still leave fingerprints in the stuff, after, even if it's not painted. So, yeah, it takes a long time to dry. This stuff, though, because it's UV and the sun has lots of UV rays, we can afford to even get these things painted as little as five minutes. So, let's begin. All right, so we're going to get started, and this is actually all we're going to need. First thing is always the safety portion. You're gonna want some form of hand protection as you are actually going to be touching the cars because you need to obviously manipulate and move it around so then you can get in the good spots. So, and considering that this is during quarantine time, these might be a little difficult to get. Next up, you're obviously going to need your resin. Any Elagoo resin's good, or even UV resin, uh, preferably something you don't have to mix, so then it's a little lighter to spread around. Uh, this could cost anywhere between 20 to 50, 20 to thirty dollars, depending on where you get it. I think this was a twenty dollar bottle on Amazon. And then obviously, you're going to need some form of dish to put the resin in and make sure that it's at least disposable and that you're not going to need to use it afterwards. Well, you can still use it, just clean it out with a lot of alcohol, but still. I, wouldn't pref I would prefer not eating out of this once this is all done. And lastly, you're going to need, well, you can either use a foam brush or a bristle brush. The bristle brush you could at least clean after this is done. But we don't plan on doing this, and this is actually the same brush I used couple days ago so um, I might need to use a new brush so I guess we will take care of that grab a new brush and uh, we'll get to it All right. 
right, so it's been about an hour and a half. Uh, I had a class to deal with. It's supposed to be an hour, and the professor loves to go beyond that. So, while waiting for the class, I did quite a couple other cars here. But obviously, these are the two that we're most worried about. Now, if you're following along with me here, you're going to notice that they are a bit sticky. That's going to happen. That's, well, that's UV resin. They have to be cleaned afterwards. So, you can either clean them, or you can do what we're about to do here, which works as well. Uh, we are going to spray some acrylic sealer on it. In this case, uh, I'm using this DecoArt Triple Thick that I just happened to find in the basement. So, we're going to put our two cars up here. And we're going to use the sunlight and spray outside for once. So, uh, let's get to that. Alright, now that we're outside here on the grass, uh, there is one thing we do need to worry about. It is slightly windy, and whenever it comes to wind, you have to know which direction to spray. So looking at the flag that's flapping over there, the wind is going towards that way. So I'm going to have to rotate myself, and I can be a blockade. And most definitely, it's a good thing that we aren't perfectionists here, because then we'd be getting a whole crap ton of stuff sprayed in the cell. Now the reason why you should use acrylic sealer rather than primer straight away is because this stuff is generally meant to... Oh, here comes a hit of wind. It's supposed to be sprayed on, well, it's a surface that, heck, you would even, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Chalk dust. Um, there's a proper term for it. Uh, God, I can't think of it, my God. Such a simple word, yet I can't think of it. All right, so now that we have our base coating, now we just gotta let that dry. 